Today, we are walking through how to make a top-down RPG game completely within Excel. This will largely rely on macro VBA. There are two key components to this game we're looking to end questing and a turn-based battle structure. I have made two expansive RPG games like this before, my Fallout-inspired Wasteland RPG and my remake of Skyrim, where I painstakingly remade Skyrim on a scale-to-scale cell-by-cell map including the complete main quest and a D&D style battle mechanic. Everything we discuss here will provide the basic building blocks to make your own game and will be scalable so that you can use this lesson directly in your next game. Why don't you let me know in the comments below what you make using this tutorial. To start with, the basics. Let's save down a macro enabled Excel file and also ensure that developer tools are turned on. Macro enabled Excel is an option of save type, whereas developer tools are an option feature in the customize ribbon. If at any point you are confused with the code or want to play around with the finished version of this Excel instead, the finished Excel we are walking through, including unlocked macros, are available from the link in the description below. First thing first is setting up the game map. This will be the world hub for your entire game, so spending the time here to get it right is quite important. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will work on a basic but functional map design that you can take further and expand into your own game. Let's make a basic island map. We want the cell width to be equal on the horizontal and vertical axes to make a nice square tile. So we're gonna set both of these to be 20 pixels. On our island map, we'll have four key features. Towns will be black cells, wilderness in a dark green tile, safe farmland in a light green tile, and water as blue tiles. The colored cells are going to be important components of our game as these will be the triggers for the game quest mechanics and for battle spawns. We will use Excel's VBA logic to read the colors of our player location to determine if this should be a trigger for a quest update, battle update, or otherwise. There you have the basics of the map. You can make the game map larger or smaller to your own desire, but note down in your code any references of C3 to O15 and adjust this to meet the needs of your map, as well as changing the other code references within the module codes. Now the second piece we want to do is the basics of questing mechanics. This will be all controlled by a function that recognizes questing based on visiting the various towns across the map. These are very basic questing mechanics with the game state updated based on location triggers of the player, but this is scalable to build games of much grander desire. I want this questing mechanic to be expansive based on the towns you visit. Given we're on an island, let's make the first few quests about collecting fruit. Let's first collect bananas, return them home, then get apples, return them home, after doing these chores, we want to head out east and go surfing, then head home after the end of the day exhausted. Very basic fetch quests and traveling quests, but the key here is to create a functional and readable data table mechanic. Notice how the trigger locations are on the leftmost column, the top row reads the relevant game state, and the intercept of these two points are the relevant text that appears on trigger mechanics. We have now set up the questing mechanic in section U3 to AA9, with each row relating to a town location and each column relating to a text mechanic that appears given the game state stored in R12. For later, we need to ensure that the correct town locations trigger a change in the game state to progress these quests, effectively using a changing future player location as the key trigger for your quest logic. The first real code we want to implement ensures the basic movement and spawn mechanics are introduced. For this, we'll be writing a few modules within VBA. Before this, however, we want to create some buttons to control player spawn, clearing the game map, and movements in the four cardinal directions. The first piece of code is the spawn mechanic, which will introduce our player character onto the game map. For this purpose, we are spawning in a red oval shape. As part of the spawn mechanic, we'll also run a clear player function to ensure that any existing player shape from earlier games or testing is removed. Secondly, we'll also add a separate clear game mechanic, which will clear the game board of any existing shapes. This is a fail safe and developer tool to clear the game map if any errors occur. The key part here to note is the reference to the game map. This is the area that you can adjust for your own custom maps. Thirdly, we'll also introduce the movement mechanic that allows the shape object that is spawned to be movable in the four directions when their buttons are pressed. Make note for the check blue cell component. What this is doing is preventing any movement to occur that sets the player character onto the blue tiles. The number in the bracket here refers to the RGB color wheel. Part of the move player mechanic also updates the player character location, which is referenced in cell R15. Initially, I introduced this as a check to see if Excel would correctly recognize and read player location, but I later incorporated this to be useful in the battle and quest update mechanics. After we're happy with this code, we need to align our create macro buttons to the respective code modules. To do this, we right click on each button and choose the assign macro option, then choosing the correct respective macro to run on button press. Now let's test the movement mechanic. Moving in the four directions is working nicely and cleanly. We're unable to overlap blue tiles when any error message is read. Therefore the code is functioning as we expect at this point in time. 
The next mechanic we want to introduce is the quest framework and progression process. Again, this will be controlled using Excel's VBA. Here I update the quest table framework to also include trigger points in the bottommost row, and also making sure the black tile locations are accurately aligned with town locations in column U. Then it was all about introducing a check for quest mechanics that read in the player location and table locations to test if the map mechanics are reading correctly. This involved a bit of trial and error to ensure that the code was reading in exactly what I wanted it to read, including picking up the correct adjacent column information, which initially it failed to do so. As I mentioned before, all of the questing mechanics in this game refer and trigger a change in the game state, all tracked within the cell R12, which we add a reset function into the spawn mechanic to return this to a value of 1 at the starting state. The key elements of this quest mechanic relate to reading in information stored within the Excel spreadsheet including understanding how each column and row elements are read, as well as updating the key game state for this RBG game to function correctly. But they are simple, but robust, so that you can build these out expansively. I would recommend checking out my Skyrim game to see how the quest mechanics are read. These are all hidden cells on the Skyrim game map tab. Now that completes the quest mechanics. Again, these are simple but scalable. The key here is to understand how the table format works and how to expand on this in your own code by adjusting the code reference locations. I'd recommend in your final game hiding this information from being visible to play it to prevent ruining the surprise of future quests. The battle mechanics we're going to introduce are basic turn-based mechanisms where damage is a random value between a range. There will be two basic enemy types, a turn order, health points, a game over mechanic, a level up mechanic, and a heal mechanic. First thing first is to get the visual basics in order, a simple display of images, health points, and who goes in which turn order. The images I added are random images I already had on my computer by just inserting images within cells. Obviously this can be adjusted to any means that you like for your own display. As we work through the battle mechanics, there are other features on the game hub tab that need to be updated, such as player health, as well as some coding changes to existing features that I will talk you through. Given the basic turn-based mechanics I'm introducing, the only player-controlled feature within battle will be the next function, to effectively progress the battle one turn at a time. The first piece is an existing code we want to change, by resetting the player health to be 10 on spawn, including resetting the default maximum health to also be 10 within the spawn character module. The second piece is to adjust existing code to add in a battle trigger mechanic within the move player function. What this does is read the color tile beneath the player location and see if it's a dark green tile. If it is, there is a 1 in 3 chance of a battle occurring. Think of this as a similar mechanic to classic Pokemon games running through the long grass with a chance that a wild Pokemon spawns. Again, this dark green tile is reddened by the RGB value of this colored cell. The third code change is to introduce the start battle mechanic, which does a little manipulation of Excel's visible tabs to hide the game map and unhide the battle map. Then it selects which enemy will spawn in front of the player, and it will determine the first turn order of the battle via a coin flip mechanic. The fourth code change is to introduce the next turn mechanic, which controls the health mechanic for the battle, ensuring that the health levels are greater than zero in order for the battle to continue. It then allows either the player or the enemy to attack, rolling random damage between one and zero, depending if it was a strong attack or a weak attack, and then also remembering to switch the turn order for the next player's turn. For example, if the player was to go first and they would attack rolling one or two damage before switching the turn order for the to read as enemy, who on their following turn would attack rolling a one or two before switching the turn order to read player. This repeats until either the player or enemy character has their health reduced to zero or below. When a player health reaches zero, this triggers a game over, and when the enemy health reaches zero, this also triggers a player leveling up where their health maximum is increased by one, where the battle ends and the game returns to the game map state. The important piece now is testing to make sure all the game mechanics are working as we desire. This involves testing the game win mechanics, the lose battle mechanics, the game over mechanics, the game victory mechanics, the questing mechanics, the healing mechanics, and everything else. Basically, we want to make sure that everything we have discussed and worked on today is working as we expect. Sometimes the smaller conditions or features have the smallest errors and the simplest errors. For example, my heal mechanic just wasn't triggering as I expected, which of course can be frustrating. Sometimes the best thing to do is tackle the problem from a different angle. For example, I changed the reference instead of to look at the cell location of a player to be reading the colored cell location of black tiles by RGB value to trigger a healing mechanic. After this trial and error, the game worked exactly as I originally intended. Now all of this game design has been made in a way that is scalable, so I want to hear in the comments below what games you make using the game building blocks we discussed today. Everything is basic, but understanding their functions allow for some pretty fun games to be made. As I said, 
These are the basic building blocks for you to make any games of your design. If you want more tutorials like this, like this video, leave a comment and subscribe. While you're here, why not check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.